Hello to everyone. I welcome you to my video about IS2 inventories. Now in today's video, I'm handling two numbers about IS2 inventories. So this is in form of a revision format. I'll do two numbers about IS2 and I believe the questions I have selected, they are very good questions. So at the end, I believe you will benefit from this. Then I would also like to thank students out there from different areas of the world, students from Uganda, students from Kenya, students from Europe and many others. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please share the channel to your other friends such that they can also subscribe and then learn more about accounting. So on this channel, you'll find videos about uh, IASs, videos about management accounting topics and so on so let us see what we have today so we see we have uh, the first revision question as you can see that is two inventories require inventories of raw materials and finished goods to be valued in financial statements at the lower of cost and net raisable value remember the measurement rule in IS2 is very clear that all inventories should be measured at the lower of cost and net realizable and net realizable value. Now in this question, you're required to explain the following terms in line with IS2 inventories. Define what inventories are, talk about the costs of purchase, costs of conversion, and what we call net realizable value. So we are going to see what these terms are according to IS2. Then explain how the cost of an inventory of finished goods held by a manufacturer would normally be arrived at when obtaining the figure for the financial statements. So we are going to see how to come up with the cost of inventory of finished goods held by a manufacturer. Then XX Limited is inventory includes three items for which the following details are available. You have the list price, suppliers, then you also have the net realizable value. So you have product A, product B, as well as product C. So you have the list suppliers price as well as the net realizable value. The company receives a two and a half trade discount from its suppliers. It also takes advantage of a 2% discount for property payment. So now here we have a cash discount as well as a trade discount. You are going to see how to incorporate that in our calculations. Required calculate the total value of products A, B and C, which should be shown in inventory in a statement of lunch position. Then describe the three methods of arriving at the cost of inventory, which are benchmark treatments in IS2 and explain how these are regarded as acceptable. So that's your first question. Then explain the difference that changing from a weighted average to FIFO method of inventory evaluation is likely to have on profit. So that is your first question. Let us go through this question briefly. Of course, we start by defining what inventories are. Remember inventories, these are assets that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business. In the process of production for such a sale, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. That's how inventories are defined according to IAS2. Remember, when you're defining these terms, you should be defining them in accordance to the relevant standards, not according to your own understanding, but you should define them according to the way how they are defined in the standards. So simply inventories, you have to show that they are assets that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such a sale, or in the form of raw materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process, or in the rendering of services. Then the next part was all about the costs of purchase. Remember, the cost of inventories consists of the cost of purchase, costs of conversion and other costs that are incurred to bring the inventories to their present location and condition. Now when we talk about costs of purchase, here we are talking about the purchase price, but we have to list the trade discounts, 
we have to list the rebates and some other similar items talk about recoverable taxes so the cost of purchase should include the purchase prices but less trade discounts and recoverable taxes it should include irrecoverable taxes transport handling and other costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition of the inventories those are the cost of purchase so this cost of purchase should always be included in the cost of inventories then the other cost is costs of conversion now costs of conversion these include uh, costs such as direct labor materials and overheads that are incurred to convert the inventories of raw materials work in progress into a finished product so all the costs incurred in that process to convert these raw materials or work in progress into the finished tea goods those are termed as costs of conversion labor materials and overheads fall under costs of conversion when it comes to the finished goods valuation of a manufacturer here it's just a matter of taking into account the cost of labor the cost of materials plus the allocation of overheads incurred in the process of manufacturing these finished goods so that's how you can come up with the value for the finished goods just take into account the cost of labor materials and the allocation of overheads but when it comes to overheads, we are only interested in the production overheads. Don't talk about the selling overheads or the administration overheads. We are interested in the production, in the production overheads. Then the other part, B of the question was all about coming up with the value of inventories for product A, product B, and product, and product C. It's just one rule which you have to apply here in this scenario that inventories are measured at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Simply get the cost of the products, compare the cost with their any RVs, then you find out which one is the lower. But remember, in this case, they have given you the supplier's list price. So just minus the trade discount. Don't allow for cash discounts a cash discount is simply offered uh, for prompt payment but trade discounts are offered uh, to enable the customer to buy in large quantities so it's always a reduction in the purchase in the purchase price so just get your purchase price that is the list suppliers price less the trade discount of two and a half then you come up with your cost compare it with the NRV, then you find out which one is the lower, then you use that as the basis for the valuation of your inventories. So you can see in this scenario that for product A, the cost, that is the supplier's price less the trade discount of two and a half, that cost is 3,510, the NRV is 5,100. So in this case, the lower is 3,510. So you look at each individual item, and you find out which one is the lower out of the cost and then the NRV. The lower is what you use as the basis for your valuation. So in this case, you can see that the valuation of the inventories is 10,405. So we are taking the lower of the cost and NR and the NRV. Then part B, this was all about the three methods of arriving at the cost of inventories. Now we have what we call the unit cost. This is the price or the actual amount paid for each individual item so i can come up with the cost of inventories by looking at the unity cost or what was the actual amount paid for that individual item that is one method of arriving at the cost of the inventory then the other method is first in first out when it comes first in first out the inventory is priced or valued according to the price paid for the most recent purchase so if this purchase is insufficient to cover the quantity in inventory, then the price of the next most recent is taken as necessary. Remember, FIFO method assumes that the items that we have purchased first are the items that have to be issued out first. Don't forget that. So meaning that the inventories in hand are those from the latest 
purchases. Then we also have what we call the average cost where inventory is priced at the moving weight and the average price. So with the average cost, you issue the inventories at the average cost. Average cost, you simply get the total value of the inventories at hand over the quantity of the inventories at hand. Then you come up with that average price, which you can use when you're making the issues. So all of these three methods are acceptable under IS2 uh, because they are either the cost of the inventory that is method one or they are reasonably close approximation to the actual cost that is method two and method and method three. So method one is the actual cost of the inventory. Then when it comes to method one and method two and three, that is FIFO and the weighted average, those are close approximation to the actual, to the actual cost. Then uh, the impact of changing from weighted average to FIFO. Remember the weighted average method values items withdrawn from inventory at the average price of all goods held in inventory at the time. Therefore, this method smooths out any fluctuations due to rising or falling prices. The four method inventory valuation assumes that the items sold are the oldest one received from the suppliers. Thus, any goods at the year end will be assumed to have been purchased recently. Changing from FIFO, changing from the weighted average to FIFO is likely to increase the value of the closing inventory. This would reduce the cost of sales figure in profit or loss and increase the reported profit figure. Why? Because the value of closing inventory is going to increase because we are having these inventories at the prices of the latest purchases. So if there is inflation, then your value of closing inventory is likely to be high. And if it's high, then your cost of source figure will reduce. And in this, you expect the profits to increase. Revision question two. Identify the point at which the current amount of inventories shall be recognized as an expense. Then ABC Enterprise year end inventory amount to shillings that value that cost, including this amount is some timber garden furniture which has been damaged by a forklift and it is beyond repair. The cost of this damaged inventory was shillings that. ABC Enterprise sold it to a local old cheap company for shillings that and incurred transport cost of shillings 170 required to calculate the value of inventory at the year end. Let's first look at the point at which inventories are recognized as expenses. Now under IS2, whenever inventories are sold, the current amount of the inventory is sold shall be recognized as an expense in the period in which the revenue is recognized. Then in case of any write-downs of inventories to any RV, any inventory losses or reversals, these will also be recognized as expenses in the period in which they are made. So current amount of inventory is sold that will be recognized as an expense any inventory write down or any inventory loss that shall also be recognized as an expense in the period in which those losses come. Then part B is all about coming up with the value of inventory at the year end. So now in this case, of course, you have to be having the total value of inventories as per the inventory count, and that is 142,800. However, included in that value, you have some damaged items at cost. The cost of the damaged items is 4650. However, these damaged items can be sold where the selling price is 1200 but the cost to make the sale is 170 So meaning that we can arrive at the NRV of these damaged items. Remember NRV is the estimated selling price in the ordinary course of business less the cost to make and the cost to complete the sale. So the selling price is 1200 
the cost to make and complete the sale is 170. So our NRV for these domain items is 1030. So you have the cost as well as the NR as well as the NRV. So our inventory write down is getting the cost of the inventories damaged minus their NRV. So the inventory write down is 3620. So meaning that we are going to reduce our inventories by 3620. So you get the total cost of inventories as per the count minus the inventory write down of 3620 to come to the total value of closing inventory as 139,180. The journal entry to record the closing inventory is there, so you debit inventory, that is current assets, the statement of financial position is 139,180, then credit closing inventory, that is cost of sales, in a statement of profit or loss with 139,180. Remember, there is an inventory write down of 3620, this should be recognized as an expense in the statement of profit or statement of profit or loss at the year end. So you can take it as an operating expense. Yeah, so those are the two questions I had for you. So you can go through them. Uh, the first question was all about what inventories are, the cost of purchase, cost of conversion, and then how to come up with the value of inventories when you've given when you've been given the NRV as well as the list suppliers price where there is a trade discount of two and a half remember to come up with NRV get the selling price you raise the cost to make and the cost to complete cost to complete sale then the next question was all about when to recognize an expense in respect of inventories and then how to come up with the value of inventories where you have some damaged items. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and share too. Much thanks from Senior Huntington. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.